So I've lined these views up just before we get onto labeling. I'm going to make sure these other views are set to be hidden lines. So I'm going to select all of these viewports, go up to modify properties, and I can mass change the properties of all of those. So I'm going to actually turn off the visible box. I'm going to go to hidden line and check set custom hidden line style. Hit OK and hit escape. Now all of these are set up with the hidden line type. So now to set labels for these, I'm going to use the multi-line text tool. So I click on that icon, I'm going to go up to properties and click on multi-line text. Now the text I'm going to use or the font is ISO CP2, so you can find that in there. And because this is a label, I'm going to make it 5mm high text. So just hit OK on that. Click and hold shift to drag a horizontal line. So this one's going to be block 1 ISO. Hit OK. Now the text tool stays active, so to exit out of it, you have to pick another command. So I'm just going to pick the select command, grab this text and just center it a bit more under my view. So now I can copy this text over for each of the other views. Holding shift to make sure it all lines up vertically. Now to edit the text that's already on there, I need to click on the text tool again and then click on the text that I've put on there. So this is my top view. Hit OK. So this is my front view. And this is my back view. So now I can copy these labels across to each of the other views. By holding shift I can select multiple. Again, holding shift to make sure I'm dragging in a straight line. So now I can go through and edit the labels on these to say block 2 and block 3. I'll do that and skip ahead. Okay, so I've updated all my labels on these drawings. Um, so now we'll get on to dimensioning these blocks up. So dimensioning is very easy in, in paper space. You just click on dimension and we use the parallel dimension for now. Um, so before I start drawing a dimension, I'm going to go into Modify Properties and make sure it's set up how I want it. So if I click on Format, um, I want to set my arrowheads, typically they're at about 4.5mm, I like a bit smaller, so I'm going to set it to 2mm. Uh, I'm going to set my text height to 2.5mm and, and under Units, I'm going to untick Append Units and I'm going to make sure my precision is set to 0. Uh, the precision, as you can see here, um, sets how many numbers after the decimal point you have. So if it's zero, it just rounds up. Um, and we'll just assume that all the units on this drawing are in millimeters, so I can turn that up. Hit OK. Now we want to dimension every major feature on each of these blocks just once. So in the top view, I'm going to dimension up. Uh, the width of my block and the length and then in my front view I'm going to dimension the depth now you notice that dimension is one of the commands that stays active until you deactivate it and then I dimension these upstands and the distance to the notch now because this is a parallel dimension line, if I just click there and there, you'll see it comes out of parallel. So I need to hover over these points to get the inference for points, in, inferred reference points. And again, to line these up, I just hover over the end and I get the inferred reference points so I can make all those dimensions line up nicely. And one more dimension for the length of the notch. And that's pretty much every major feature on this top on this block one. Um, so now I'm going to repeat that for block two. Again, in the top view, I'm just going to dimension the width, the overall length of this block, 
and on this block I'll also be mention this little notch and on the front view I'll be mention the depth and all these upstairs Um, you can mention any anywhere you want. I've included the back view mainly for clarification on some of the more complicated blocks. Um, but for these simple ones, it's not really necessary. Um, I'm going to go through, I'll dimension up the rest of these blocks, and as you can see, it's not really looking very balanced on the sheet. So I'll adjust these, and I'll also repeat the same process we went through on these to, for the next three blocks, um, and I'll skip ahead with the finished project. Okay, so here's the finished product. I've gone through and set up both pages with all of my isometric views and some dimensions and I've also just stuck in a simple title block uh, which will show the scale and tells, them, tells you what units the drawing's in. Um, I've also set up, through my page set up, uh, a PDF printer so I can print these out as PDFs. Uh, and then you can email these or print these onto sheets of paper. Now you can see some of these blocks probably aren't the clearest view in a, in a true isometric so maybe when you set these up you can rotate them around a bit to get a better view of what's actually happening but uh, for simple shapes they do the job. Now you can see here those triangle edges we mentioned right back after we opened our SketchUp file in DoubleCAD um, I'll look into how to get rid of these. In the meantime, we can just ignore them. Uh, so there you go. That's the workflow from SketchUp into DoubleCAD. Um, now I've kept it all to the DoubleCAD um, XT version, not the Pro version. Uh, Pro version has the drafting palette, which makes a lot of this easier, uh, which I may cover in another tutorial, but the DoubleCAD tutorials on YouTube actually cover that quite comprehensively. So I hope you've enjoyed this and found it educational. Um, if you have any feedback or requests feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or on my website which is www.craftycad.com um, and yeah keep an eye out for more tutorials in the future.